Welcome to the channel guys. We are back again and today I'm going to be talking about four fragrances for life, one for each season. So stay tuned for that. If you like first impressions, fragrance reviews, clone comparisons, top 10 lists, hit that subscribe button for more great content. So as usual, I was watching Aussie Fragrances channel, noticed him doing this tag series and I decided to do this video mostly because you know what, it's a pretty common topic and usually do it at least once a year. And I don't think I've done it this year, so I thought I would do it and I thought I would pick some interesting picks that you might not be expecting even if you do watch the channel. This is the niche edition. I might do a designer edition in a couple weeks. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but the idea of four fragrances for life, one for each season. And since we're rolling into fall, I'm gonna start with fall. It makes the most sense as it's coming up. And this one might not be too much of a surprise, although I don't believe I've ever put it on a list like this before and that's Single Malt by Killian. To me, I still think this is actually an underrated fragrance, not the most underrated from the house. There's a lot of really great fragrances that get absolutely no talk whatsoever, um, but I generally tend to think that most people prefer or really go crazy for apple brandy. You will find people looking for this one because it is hard to find, but I still don't think that it's really the most hyped up of the, uh, especially of the boozy fragrances. I think apple brandy, uh, single malt and definitely angel share get a lot more love than this one but uh, this is definitely my favorite uh, my favorite one this is maybe even still my favorite killian i am looking forward to lure vert who knows that is coming out soon and it could definitely replace this one but i'm going to be checking that one out for sure but this is just such a beautiful boozy woody uh, fragrance with a very nice plum note. I mean, the biggest difference between this fragrance and uh, apple brandy is the fact that uh, there's a very dominant plum note. Whereas the apple brandy, you do get this sort of syrupy apple. You get more of a boozy syrupy plum with this one. So they're definitely, I think, uh, maybe brothers or sisters, if you want to think about it that way, they're definitely related fragrances. You can have them both if you like them both. They do come across quite different, even though they're very, very similar in a lot of ways. Now. The booziness to me comes across a little bit more like a rye whiskey. Really prefer rye over scotch, so that works for me quite well. Has this nice uh, woody background with a very small hint of smokiness to it, which really adds a nice depth. But this is a really gentleman's fragrance, in my opinion. To me, it's very easy to wear. Uh, maybe it just works with me, but it is one that I find a little bit easier to wear. I do even find it one that a lot of people really, really enjoy this fragrance as well. Even some of the people I know that don't really enjoy fragrances that much, this one works really well. One of the reasons I find is it's not one that is overly dominating. People are gonna smell it, there's nice sillage, but it's not one that's just really gonna force itself. It's not any style beast mode where if you, you know, find somebody who either doesn't like vanilla or, um, you know, doesn't really like fragrances that much, or even for someone like me, it can be quite cloying. It's the kind of fragrance that is gonna overpower a lot of people. This one, you can even spray a little bit more. I do usually do one more spray on this one than usual, uh, just because it is a little bit more of a subtle in the air fragrance. It's one that invites people in if you wanna think about it that way. But beautiful, beautiful fragrance. Do look forward to wearing this one more in the fall. Absolutely gorgeous and one of my favorites. Now, gonna be moving into winter. This one is a new fragrance and this is definitely one of the reasons why I haven't talked about it too much, but um, it is a really, really good fragrance and that is sweetly known by Kerosene. Now, if you do watch the channel, if you do know me, you know I love Kerosene. A lot of the times, I mean, they do have good fragrances, but on top of that, I really like the price value proposition. You basically get a niche house, we get 100 mil for, I think it's $140, which I think that's a fair price. I mean, that's what you're gonna pay for 100 mil of like Bleu de Chanel Parfum. So it's like high-end designer price, but um, you know, they're niche fragrances. They have a lot of unique fragrances. And this is one of my favorites, actually. New one, very good, uh, nice gourmand fragrance. Has this really nice, um, burnt, slightly burnt baked good vibe in the opening. Very nice cardamom opening too, if you like cardamom, although I find this cardamom different than say something like uh, Dolce Gabbana the one Intense, where I find that one has also a really nice, very um, invigorating um, cardamom opening, which I really recommend if you like cardamom, try that one out, see if you like the opening. This one is a little bit more on the gourmandy side, 
and does come across as actually a very nice relaxing kind of burnt baked good vibe like slightly burnt not in a bad way not overly cooked but if you find one of those baked goods that has a little bit of searing on the um, on the top of it, it definitely gives you that vibe now it dries down very nice fluffy marshmallowy kind of vibe now some people have said it smells a little bit like uh, by the fireplace and at this point I would actually agree with them there is a similarity there um, in the dry down with by the fireplace it just has that very nice warm inviting uh, marshmallowy fluffy kind of vibe that personally I really really love in it, especially with a gourmand fragrance uh, but you know all in all this one is overall quite unique there is some resemblance in the dry down to um, by the fireplace now this is probably the strongest most la long lasting fragrance I own um, this is like definitely 12 hours plus really more like 15 hours plus if you like wearing more than one fragrance per day uh, you're probably not going to do it with this one because even just wearing a little bit of it it is going to last like all day depending on when you spray it on a shower may not even help you get it off so it is one that you kind of want to wear for the whole day because it's going to last that long it's not absolutely beast mode the entire time but there is definitely good projection good sillage um, for for quite some time but it's not like 15 hours of filling an entire room but it definitely does have the sillage and the performance really really nice one and one I recommend trying out if you do like gourmands and if you of course one that I've had on the list many times if you also like gourmands you should try it. Unknown Pleasures from the same house kerosene really really good one as well so we're into spring springtime to me is probably the best time there's just something about it that I think makes vetiver work really well so I want to pick a vetiver fragrance and none other than Nishane Sultan vetiver now I was talking to someone about this one um, actually I think it was on the channel um, in the comments now well, it might have been on Facebook I'm not sure now this is a really good vetiver fragrance but I also do think of this one as something you kind of wear for yourself so this is not the one that's really gonna like garner compliments if that's what you're looking for it's not gonna grab people's attention it's not a super loud crazy you know flashy kind of a fragrance it is a very nice gentlemanly vetiver fragrance and for people who like vetiver of course this is going to be a very refined version where you do get a lot of what vetiver has to offer in fact the only thing i don't get the only facet of vetiver i don't get with this one is there is no soapiness in this fragrance but there is that really really nice sort of woodsy marshy vibe that i really like when vetiver has this so it really kind of gives me the impression of washing walking through a marsh there's kind of this feeling of clean water and a nice woodiness and you can kind of I guess picture the tall grass in the marshes with the water kind of gives me that kind of idea at points there is times where it has a little bit of an inkiness like an encre noir it's not overly earthy uh, but there is definitely a dry woodsy vibe in this one as well and you do also get a little bit of a smoky vetiver so it does have virtually all of it it's a very gentlemanly very refined um, it is one of those fragrances though that like I said it's not the kind of fragrance if you really want to catch people's attention this is probably not going to be it and it is going to be one that is you know it's a niche house it is a little bit more of a niche fragrance in that it's something that I think you should wear it if you enjoy it this is what not not the it's if you're not if you're trying to impress people this is the one you want to pick up but it is a good one and I don't think it's one that is going to be offensive to people it's just not an attention grabber anyways last one on the list and the one that some of you might certainly be able to guess and I just had to put this one on because I absolutely love it and that is Sedley by Parfums de Marley for summer and it's just I mean I wore this the other day and it just brings a smile to my face that really fizzy citrusy bright opening is just so invigorating so easy to like and I think that's one of the things about Parfums Marley they have a lot of fragrances that are very very easy to like and you know if you find them on the gray market to me the price value proposition is definitely there at retail I would have a hard time pushing Parfums de Marley but you know 300 plus USD is, is a lot of money to spend on a fragrance but um, like I said you can get them like half price on discounters or in the gray market if you check out the Facebook group for Parfums de Marley but really great sort of citrusy opening fizzy uh, bright fresh doesn't really have an aquatic vibe 
um, there is this nice mintiness that gives it a little bit of a really nice crispness that I also really, really enjoy about this fragrance. Now, it does also have a woody dry down. Performance on this one, if you get a newer batch, for me, this is a beast mode fragrance. I go two or three sprays and that's crazy performance on me. Projecting like beast mode, three, four hours, very, very strong projection, very, very strong sillage. And it will be lasting, you know, towards that eight hour mark. And you know, with a fresh fragrance, that's really quite good. Um, you know, the old performance was atrocious even for a citrus fresh fragrance, which, you know, I'm happy if I get six hours with decent projection because they just don't last as long. Um, but you get definitely a much more than that with this one. Whatever they did to fix it, they did it really well. So guys, that is it. Top four fragrances for life. Niche edition. Thanks to Aussie Fragrance just for existing. <laughs> Reminded me of this, uh, this video series. Thought I would do it. I'm going to leave a link down to his channel just because you should check him out if you don't know him. He's got some great stuff. Also, uh, you know, what would your top four fragrances for life be? Niche fragrance only. Like I said, I might do a designer fragrance video in, uh, in the near future with this, with this topic. But let me know down below what would they be. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.